We just got in a trade for our Alpha Mox Ruby uh, in exchange for some unlimited power, like an unlimited time walk, unlimited duels, and some other goodies. Beautiful card, just just gorgeous. So we got this in the trade for our Alpha Lotus, actually. A small amount of inking, which you can see up in this corner. Tiny, tiny bit of inking around the edges of this card. I think this is uh, still quite an Alpha piece of power. It's hard to find cards in, in this nice of condition. Uh, and of course it is signed, so. This is a little tricky one. So we marked this one as MP. That's what we gave this customer. It was a little bit of a negotiation. We wanted to give him you know, a good value for the card and make sure that he traded with us. So we, we bumped this up and in the store though, I think once you take a look at the back of this, right, there, there's quite a bit of damage on the back here. So this is, you know, basically like HP poor is kind of how it will be going up on the site. Despite having really nice eye appeal, it, it's kind of a way of making everyone happy and making the math work. Uh, but when we do list it, you know, we'll have to, we'll probably have to drop it a little bit. All right, so this is Aga Deem's Awakening, um, and this should be in mint condition. Mint is, you know, Mint is a extremely strong criteria and I would say that this this qualifies. You know, this is basically pack fresh. I don't see any other weirdness in it. Let's take a look at this unlimited Valk. Um, and so this one is listed as MP. And you know, this is kind of similar to the, the time walk a little bit where it's a little bit like a mullet. Um, you can see that the back is in worse shape than the front here, which, which is actually really nicely centered, has good eye appeal overall. So similarly, we gave an MP value on this, but it remains to be seen what we end up listing this on the site as. Say for the moment, this is listed as near mint. Would this be near mint? It's hard to say. There's a little bit of a surface dot right there. And there are some, there is surface around the back. So this one would be LP, not, not near mint. Let's take a look at this Grim Grim. So this one is also marked as near mint. May qualify, in fact. So you'll see that there, no, I'm sorry. So there's surface scratching that you see on the back here. And you'll see the surface wear up in the corner there. So also not quite near mint. Let's take a look at this possessed portal. Not bad. The face is not bad. The back is free of any scratches. And I'd say overall, this does qualify for near mint. And so this is probably the first of these that are labeled as such, um, which I would give that on. You know, the truth is our customers are, are equally strict. And so we sort of grade according to our own customer standard. We have the benefit of our Discord community who can you know sort of give us that honest feedback in real time, uh, which we're very grateful for. One, I would also say LP plus simply because it has a small amount of surface wear on the front. And that's what's interesting with some of these modern cards where I, I think that the, the standards are generally stricter than they are with the old school cards where the collectors and the customers tend to be a little bit more forgiving. So for example, let's take a look at this tangle wire. And so especially for foils, we have found customers to be extremely discerning. This does look excellent to me. I do not see any obvious surface wear cutting error in the top right corner, but that is not a defect per se, especially because it most likely came out of the pack that way. So we'll carefully put that back in there. And I do think that that qualifies for that foil near mint multiplier. That way we, we always at least match card kingdom pricing. All right, so let's take a look at this enlightened bushy. So not a lot of value, only four bucks on this guy. I think overall, good shape. Looks like near mint to me. Okay, cool. And I'm gonna probably skip ahead to some of the more higher value cards now, like this unlimited Savannah. So this one is marked as, looks like HP. Quite a bit of surface wear, a lot of uh, damage on the back. So I, I do think this one is HP is appropriate. Near mint unlimited duels are extremely difficult to find. This is definitely not near mint though, unfortunately. Now that I'm taking a look at the back, you, you know, so um, front really nice. Let's just be clear, really, really, really nice front. But if we look at the back here, there's just a little bit too much wear um, on this edge that you see the whitening there. So this is really more like an LP minus than it is a near mint. Unlimited Bayou. Um, bayous have gone up a lot in price. The, our, our revised Bayous just kind of keep getting cleaned out. So this one, I'd say solid MP, MP minus almost, because this actually has um, roller lines as well as quite a bit of surface wear. HP, definitely, because this has quite a bit of surface wear on both the front and the back. It definitely puts this one at HP. And then this uh, Unlimited Savannah, let's see. Also really nice, nice face nonetheless, you know, really nice eye appeal on this. Definitely has quite a bit of surface wear down here that you can see and some surface scratching. Uh, quite a bit of uh, wear on the back as well. So HP for this. 
Um, so, you know, this was this is a unique trade in that um, our customer is very patient with us as we were testing uh, Purple Mana 2.0. So, you know, despite there being a few discrepancies, we're, we're probably just going to give this to James uh, for being so patient with us and for uh, testing out Purple Mana 2.0. We're going to give up a little bit of value uh, to make to make our customer happy here. Well, let me give a little update on the market. Um, things seem very healthy, actually. When crypto crashed, um, we actually saw a lot of people spending their money and reallocating and buying magic cards with us. Uh, the same thing actually happened happens when crypto spikes up as well. So just kind of become more bullish on the market as a result. Like I think this is a very special vintage uh, that we typically deal in, meaning like old school magic. Um, and it just kind of continues to outperform. It, it's one of my best performing asset classes. That's not a recommendation to, to run out and deploy money into it, but it's more an observation from what I've seen among my portfolios. Nonetheless, it just continues to be interesting, continues to surprise me every day. Very thankful for, for the community support and all, all the help in getting where we are today. Thanks for watching. This is Encore from Purple Mana.